Um, mostly we've been focusing on uh, applying strategies that are already available for genomic technologies towards the field of proteomics. And that means instead of trying to measure, for example, uh, mRNA levels that, that might be changing between two different cell states, say a cancer cell and a non-cancer cell, we're trying to measure the protein differences between those same two samples, but on a global level, on a comprehensive level. Over the years, we've been using um, Thermo Fisher instruments. The instruments are so much better that they allow us to collect that same data in one or two days even. And we've really been impressed with both the quality and the robustness, as well as the changes that continually are coming. Many instrument companies, they do a very good job once of getting a good instrument to you, but overall, over the last five or six years, there have been you know, five or six different landmark uh, you know, instruments that have been released by, by Thermo Fisher. And, and we've been fortunate enough to, to, to utilize all of these in different ways and, and to really push forward the, the cutting edge of where you can, what you can do you know, with, with protein analysis these days. In this room, for example, there are three mass spectrometers. All three of these are what you would call Orbitrap mass spectrometers. And, but one of these is the newer version of the, of the Orbitrap mass spectrometer called the Velos Orbitrap mass spectrometer. What's special about that is, on top of other changes, there's a 2x increase in the uh, speed at which it acquires data. And just that alone has really revolutionized the way that we look at, at how we use these instruments because one instrument really takes the place of two instruments now when you get that. And so it, it becomes, for, for me at least, it, it's been a, it, just that alone, besides all the other improvements, have made it worthwhile uh, to purchase these instruments.